In this video, we're going to talk about the profile view window that we just created. We're going to talk about the different parts of that profile view window and how to edit some of those components. So what we're dealing with here uh, in our profile view window is there's actually three separate components that we deal with when we're talking about profile view windows. We actually have the, the profile view window itself, which is the, the larger rectangular boundary and all the grid lines and, and annotation that are associated with it. We then have our profiles, either our surface profiles or our design profiles, which we haven't created yet. And then we have our data band at the bottom. So first we're gonna talk about the profile view window and then we'll get into our profiles and then we'll talk about data bands. So the profile view window to get into editing and talking about the different components within the profile view window, we're gonna select our profile view window, then we're gonna move up into the contextual ribbon bar under profile view properties. And inside of the profile view properties, you'll have multiple tabs associated with that profile view. Uh, the first object we're gonna talk about is the object style. And the object style controls a large component or a large amount of information uh, regarding your profile view window. So we have the information tab, which talks about the name and the description of the profile style, profile view style that we have. Moving on, we have the graph. And so the graph tab uh, controls what we have our vertical and horizontal scale set at. So you can choose your current horizontal scale and you can modify it. And then based on what your current horizontal scale is and what you have your vertical scale or your custom scale set to, your vertical exaggeration will automatically update depending on these components. As you can see from the equation here, equals horizontal over vertical scale. You can also control which direction your profile reads, whether it's left to right or right to left. And this a lot of the components inside of the profile view style and also when we're talking about the data bands and that kind of stuff, they have handy icons that kind of show you what we're talking about. So if I click right to left, it shows you the direction that it's going to read. And then left to right shows you the direction it's going to read. Same thing with grids. We have clipping options for our grid lines. So if you want to clip vertical grids, this icon will show you what it's going to look like after you're done. So if you can clip the highest profile, you'll see the grid lines will go up to the highest profile and then clip once it crosses the highest profile line. Or you can omit grid and padded areas. Padded areas are down below here. It's basically setting upper and lower buffers in elevation and then horizontal buffers in our station. So basically whatever our grid setting is for our increment, we're going to give one increment to the left and one increment to the right, two increments above, two increments below. And you can change these numbers to give yourself more padding or less padding depending on what you need. So I'm going to go ahead and unclip this or unclick this and then we'll move over to horizontal. Horizontal is the same as vertical. You can clip it, you can clip it to the highest profile or you can omit grade and padded areas. And then we have an offset axis. So what you can do here is you can, when you do a profile view window, it centers the profile in the view window. If you want to uncenter the profile in the profile view window, then you would use this off axis offset to move your profile to the left or the right or up or down. Moving on to title annotation, this is going to show us how the title that we have here, like our dev align profile at the top, uh, how each of the sides are labeled. So we have the top and then we have the text type, location, text style, and then we have over here the graph view title, what the content of that is going to be. And so if I wanted to change the content of this, I could type it in here uh, and then we can edit the text based on what information we want to pull into the title. And then moving on from there, we have the title position and then we can move to the right hand side. Same edits, location, text style, further location information, text information, and then bottom and left are all the same. Moving on to horizontal axis, we have our major ticks, what intervals they fall at, the tick sizes, the justification of the tick. We have the text height and then we have the text value. So you can go into here, edit the text value, pull information from the four options that you have here and shoot them across to give yourself information into your, your horizontal bands for your horizontal axis. So then moving on from there, we have our rotation of that text and our offset of that text. Then we have our minor ticks. So our major ticks are our 
zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and so on. Our minor ticks are, are intervals of, for this one, 25 feet. You can change the interval, but most of the time you're gonna be using 125. Uh, tick sizes you can change, justification again, just the same as the major ticks. And then you also have the option for displaying horizontal geometry, which inside of this window, you can see these lines that don't fall on, on an actual grid line. Those are marking out where uh, you have horizontal geometry in your profile that are associated with a horizontal curve or a, a or some sort of horizontal component of your alignment. Moving on to vertical axes, we have the left and the right, just as we had in the horizontal axis, we have the top and the bottom. We have the options for our major tick, our intervals for major and minor, our tick sizes for major and minor, our justifications, and our tick label text, and our textile rotation and offsets. So same thing as before, if you wanna edit, what information is being displayed on the vertical axis, you can go into the edit text, pull down the information that you wanna pull, and then shoot it across into your label and apply it. So then we can move on to the display tab. And this is where we kind of control everything. We've set up all of our parameters, and now we're gonna tell it what we want it to display. So you have, you move from your graph title, you control all of your left axis information, then you control all of your right axis information, then your top axis, and then your bottom axis, and then you have your grid information. So moving on from there, you can set all of your layers, your colors, your visibility to control how much or how little information you want to display in the profile view window. And once you've had this all set up, you can go ahead and hit apply. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay since that didn't change anything. And we're going to move on to stations. So stations is the same as when we set up the profile view window. We have it set to automatic. If we wanted to modify that, we could go to user specified range and shrink down our profile view window but we're gonna go ahead and leave it as automatic. Same thing with elevation. It is the set height that we had when we created our profile view window. Uh, we could modify it to a user specified height, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as automatic. If you specify user height and your height is small enough that you are required to do split profile views, you can then go in and select split, split profile views and do either manual or automatic and if you switch between manual and automatic, you're gonna get this warning that says warning all manually specified splits values will be lost. And so I'm just gonna say, okay, cause I don't care. And so I'm gonna uncheck this and move back to automatic height. Then we have our profile display information, just as we had before when we created the view window, where you can control how your actual profile gets displayed in this window. So what the style is, and really the style is the most important part for, for this display window, because it's gonna control what that actual profile looks like. Moving on to bands. Now we can talk about bands. The bands are the information at the very, very bottom of the window. Uh, what you can do is you can also apply bands to the top of the profile view. And as you can see, we have none applied in here. If we were to select a band type, we could go down and choose a band style, and then we could add it to our profile view window, and it would be applied to the top of profile based on our location. You can also get other information, profile data, vertical geometry, horizontal geometry, super elevation section data, and pipe data. And then each one of those would have a specific band style associated with it. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the band that we have applied and all the bands act in the same way as this one will. There may be more information or less information dependent upon what band type you pick, but the way to create and edit them is all gonna be the same. So I'm gonna move down to profile data I'm gonna go ahead and look at edit current selection. And what you're gonna see in here is your information for the, t the name of your profile band, the band details, the display. So all of the information that we're gonna set up in our band details, how you're gonna, whether or not you're gonna display it and how it's gonna be displayed and what layers it's gonna be displayed on. And then you have your summary tab, like any other style window that we have dealt with so far as we've been working through Civil 3D. So moving into the band details, what you have options for are labels and ticks at certain points inside of your profile view window. You can have your major stations, minor stations, horizontal geometry points, so begin of curve, end of curve, that kind of information for your actual alignment. Then we have our vertical geometry points. So when we have a, a design profile, 
whether you have a grade break or a vertical curve or something like that, you can display certain vertical geometry, geometry points and information into the data band. Same with station equations and incremental distances. And every time you want to deal with one of these, you can choose whether or not you have full band height ticks or small ticks. And the small ticks, you set the sizes of those ticks. The only time you don't get to deal with this is when you're talking about incremental distances and all you get to have is a compo is composing a label. Moving into composing an actual label, each of these are going to be the same. What we're dealing with is we're dealing with a as the same as all of the labels that we've dealt with for any of the other objects inside of Civil 3D. We have a general settings where we talk about our label, textiles, our visibility, our layer that it's on, our orientation, our insertions, our readability, and then we deal with the layout of how it's actually being displayed. Most important is the contents of that label. So moving into the contents of the label, you have options for all of the different properties dependent upon which type of band you're working with. So we're currently working with a profile data band. So we're going to be able to pull a lot of information in about profiles. So if you wanted to pull information about uh, a different component, not necessarily your profile data, but maybe uh, your horizontal geometry data, then that would be a different band set and you would have different properties available to you in your text component editor. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. You also have your drag state. You can drag some of these and this is how you would set up your drag state for those ticks. And then when you're finished, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. It will apply that information to this major station. And then you would have to move through and set up your labels for each individual label and tick style. And then when you're done with that, like I said before, you would set up your display settings and then hit apply and hit OK. And that's how this data band would display itself.